Greetings, we hope all is well. This is the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Genesis 1-1, KJV, states, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And 2 Corinthians 5-7, KJV, states, For we walk by faith, not by sight. While Romans 10:17 KJV says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Which brings us to Hosea 4:6 KJV, that states, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I am your host Minister Larry Montgomery. Senior. The sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www.theauthorscorner.online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. God bless. And hello and welcome to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast. I'm your host. Elder Dr. Larry Montgomery Sr. And this week's topic is testimony. How to and why you should. <laughs> I know everybody's probably sitting there laughing. So what is this man talking about? We all know how to testify. I mean, really, you know, when God does something in your life, you, you got no real choice but to tell somebody about what he's done for you. But really, there are a lot of us out there who really don't have a clue on how to testify. Well, because you got to understand that there are many different situations that you might be in and be prompted, given the unction, to testify or see the opportunity to testify on how good God has been to you. So let me introduce this topic with this short video and then we'll get started. All right, everyone. Today, I'm diving into something close to my heart, mastering the art of testifying anywhere. Whether it's in church, during a personal conversation, in public, to a stranger, or with fellow believers at a gathering, I've got you covered. First up, testifying in church. This is a safe and nurturing environment. Start by praying for guidance. Share your story with authenticity. Remember, your testimony is a testament to God's work in your life. Speak with confidence, knowing you're surrounded by support and love. Next, let's talk about personal conversations. Here, it's all about being genuine. Listen to the other person with empathy. Find common ground and gently weave your testimony into the conversation. Your personal story can be a powerful bridge to faith. Now, testifying in public. This can be daunting, but remember, it's about planting seeds of faith. Be respectful and considerate of others' beliefs. Share your story with humility and grace. People are drawn to sincerity and truth. When it comes to testifying to a stranger, start with kindness. Maybe it's a smile, a helping hand, or a simple act of service. These small gestures can open the door for deeper conversations. When the moment feels right, share your testimony with a heart full of love. Finally, let's not forget fellowship gatherings. Here you're among fellow believers. Your testimony can inspire and uplift others. Share your experiences, the challenges, and the victories. It's a time for mutual encouragement and building each other up in faith. Remember, testifying isn't about perfection. It's about being real and sharing the transformative power of God's love. Each testimony is unique and has the potential to touch hearts in ways you might never imagine. So, go ahead and testify with courage and compassion. Your story matters, and it could be the light someone needs today. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more inspirational content. Until next time, stay blessed.
Okay, so I guess it started here. But how do we testify in church, in a personal conversation, in public, to a stranger or a group of believers during a fellowship gathering? Good question. <laughs> and my response. There are five parts to a testimony. The five basic parts to telling your story the opening, your life before Christ, how you came to Christ, your life after Christ, and then the closing. <clears throat> now, that might seem a little formal, however, it just gives you some guidelines as to what you should be thinking about as you're speaking. When it comes to sharing your testimony, focus on a key a few key points, what your life was like before Christ or before you went to him about a particular situation or what was going on right before Christ showed himself in your situation. How you came to know him. If you did not truly believe before this particular situation, include the gospel. Share that Christ alone, not works, has saved you, had blessed you. How your life is different today because of him. Openly give him glory for what he has done. Share a passage of scripture from which God has spoken to you. Now, I have a simple testimony here. Um, it's someone's testimony and it might be a little more, more sophisticated than one might think, but let me read it and uh, put it out there and move for thought. The testifier says, I gave up, I grew up in a Christian family. So I was surrounded by God and the church from the very beginning. I was raised in a Christian home, but just followed through the motions of doing Christian things that I thought you should, you were supposed to do. I didn't know him. I just knew about him. I found myself searching for purpose and meaning in people and also in myself, whether that was my friends or in relationships. I poured my whole heart into them. I also became very fixated on myself and my image. I became very consumed with what people thought of me and was living for the acceptance of the world. At my lowest point when I was alone and afraid, God drew me to himself. From growing up in a Christian home, I knew what to do. I knew that he could save me if I just let him. I confessed that I am a sinner and that I was trying to find life in other people and myself. I acknowledged that he sent Jesus to die on the cross so that I can be saved from my sin and have eternal life. I committed to living for God instead of others. Since knowing him, God showed me that being a Christian isn't about just doing good works. He made it clear that I do not have to earn my salvation or his love. We find that in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. He has given me fulfillment and purpose and joy. I am not perfect and I still mess up. But God loves me despite my flaws and imperfections. And when the things I was pursuing before continually, I was pursuing before continually let me down, God has never once let, left me. He has shown himself to me in his word, the Bible, in 
this is where you might add your scripture. God loved me even at my lowest point, and he rescued me from myself and eternal separation from him. So what does it mean that our lives should be a testimony to God? I have another video here. I'm sure it's really short. I think it's interesting. Is a powerful way to communicate your faith in God's work in your life. Here are some practical steps for testifying in different contexts. In church or fellowship gatherings. Be specific. Focus on your conversion experience and how Christ has transformed your life. Keep it relevant. Share current experiences with God. Be honest. Stick to the truth without exaggeration or dramatization. Example. Follow the Apostle Paul's model in Acts 26, where he shares his life before conversion, his encounter with Jesus, and his new life afterward. 1. In personal conversations. Listen first. Understand the other person's needs and struggles. Relate. Share how God has helped you overcome similar challenges. Be genuine. Speak from the heart, emphasizing God's grace and love. In public or with strangers. Be concise. Keep it short and impactful. Focus on salvation. Highlight how you came to know Jesus. Invite questions. Be open to further discussion. Remember, your testimony is a unique story of God's work in your life. When shared sincerely, it can touch hearts and draw others closer to him. I think that we should understand that there, I would just say off the top of my head, two different kinds of testimonies, maybe even three, probably three, but I'm not going to get to all three of them today. Uh, the first one, which was pretty much highlighted in the uh, video, is about sharing how you began your relationship with God. And that testimony would more than likely highlight the fact of what happened, what transpired prior to you seeking to know God better. Then maybe some pointers as to how deep you were in sin. What types of things were you experiencing? What things were going through your mind, through your body, through your life that made you realize that things got to be better than what this is? You know, you, you, you see people nowadays, and I can't be critical of the fashion trends. However, um, some of them are a little more over the top than they were when I was uh, a young young man. Um, some of them may seem to be more of, uh, I want to fit into a particular niche or a particular clique that I dress a particular way. I get uh, tattoos, certain kinds of tattoos in certain places. Uh, people have tattoos on their face. I mean, okay, that's what you want to look like from the age of whatever till you get old, assuming you're going to get old, um, and you have that image painted on your face. But whatever. And so at that moment when you decided that you wanted to get to know God or you needed God to help you, um, or you needed to get understanding about God, whatever it was that drove you to him. This is a part of your testimony, but the meat of that, now that you've laid the stage, the meat of that is what has he done in your life to change your circumstance that you're happy with? I mean, oh, listen, I used to cuss like a sailor and I found myself, I couldn't help myself. I, everywhere I went, I'd be cursing and carrying on. I, I, I got a job and almost lost it because of, because of my language. I met a new friend and was trying to uh, start a relationship with them. And then, you know, the, the, the words that were coming out of my mouth were so offensive. Every breath I took, they decided they didn't want to hear my voice anymore. 
whatever the circumstance was, was, now that God has entered your life and you've committed to him, you work hard on changing that situation. And that pleasure that you get out of that is something that you want to express to other people. That's a part of your testimony. The fact that you have committed to God means that you are working to get to know him better. And the only two ways to do that, and really they're both equally important, is one, reading his word, and secondly, praying to him. And these things should be done on a regular basis, not haphazardly or when I get a chance or um, next Every other week, I, I sit down and I and I read a passage in the Bible, or or every season, I, I take a trip to the church, and you know I get you know some insights. No, that's not how it works. That's not how you get to know someone. That's not how anyone can get to know you. So why would you think that that's the method, the methodology, to getting to know God? And so. With that in mind, um, let me bring this to forth, bring this forth. What does it mean that our lives should be a testimony for Jesus? The testimony for Jesus in view here would be a lifestyle and words that openly acknowledge our personal experience of following Jesus Christ. A testimony must be public because its purpose is to tell others what has taken place in the Christian experience. Our regeneration should be a testament evidence to other people that Jesus is alive and is changing lives. We testify by our words and actions if our lives are a testimony for Jesus Christ, then they should be reflections of Jesus Christ as we follow in his steps. That's something you can find in 1 Peter 2, 21. Now turning to Acts 4 and 33, the apostles give their testimony in words and with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The apostles testifying of the resurrection were telling others what they had seen with their own eyes, heard with their own ears, and touched with their own hands. They gave a personal witness, eyewitness account of Christ's resurrection. In the same way, believers today are commanded, believers today are commanded to tell others of what they have witnessed firsthand. We haven't had a face-to-face -face experience with Jesus as the apostles did, but our conversion experience is no less genuine and no less proof of God's supernatural work in our lives. We should eagerly share with boldness and humility the change that has taken place in our hearts. If you look at Revelations 12 and 11, it says that believers triumphed over Satan by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Notice the word of their testimony, meaning these triumph ones, triumphant ones, spoke verbally without shame or fear. Some believe that Christians ought not verbalize their testimony, but should simply live it out in their daily lives. But it's not an either or proposition. Living the gospel message is important, 
but it's no more important than our verbal testimony, since God has chosen hearing the word as the means of producing faith, Romans 10 and 17 and John 4 and 39. A life dedicated to Christ is a powerful testimony. Paul describes such a life in 2 Corinthians 1 and 12. We have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relations with you with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so relying not on worldly wisdom, but on God's grace. When our actions of godly living match the words coming from our lips, our testimony will be seen as true. I have more, but I'm going to stop there. Um, I wanted to point out, and I may have got sidetracked myself. One kind of testimony is that of when you committed to Christ. The other kind of testimony is something of a more personal um, experience. Uh, I would say, I, I would say, a reminder from God that He is with you. Something happened to you that, if not for God, could have gone way, way wrong or been tragic in its ending, but turned to be something that was just overly enlightening, overly a blessing that you did not see coming. And those kinds of testimonies, I know sometimes when, when we're uh, trying to explain to others what God has done, it, it might seem to get a little wordy because you, you're not sure if they understand the circumstances that were in play prior to the event. And then you more excited about what happened and you, you, you get more and more wordy. And then afterwards, you, you don't know how to conclude and you get more and more wordy, wordy, W-O-R-D-Y, wordy. <laughs> okay. And so it's great to, it's, it's a part of our requirement as Christians to give our testimonies to and, and doing that to give God the glory for what he's done for us. We should just be mindful that when we're talking to people who may be believers, may not be believers, that we should be as brief as we can be because they may be inspired to talk about their testimony and their experience and not have a chance to get a word in edgewise because it's all about you. And that's not, the, that's not the point. It's all about God and what he's done. So you don't have to be wordy in order to make your point and to explain what had happened to you. And so I'm not going to sit here and try to um, give you examples of those things that God has done in my life that um, for me, um, were mind blowing and amazing. But I can tell you that he has been good to me. And if not for him, I don't know where I would be because I've made some mistakes. I have sinned and I still do on occasion, hopefully not as much as I used to. But I'm more aware of it now because the Holy Spirit is, you know, active in me. You know, he keeps pushing me. He keeps convicting me. He keeps advising me. You know, some things that, you know, that will come across your mind. You're like, oh, yeah, that's how I used to be. And quickly, he had already let you know that's what you used to do. That's not what you do now. That's not what you should do now. So don't even consider it. Just move on. And it's, you know, it's in your head. And, and it's like, you know, like, 
Well, who is that saying that? Because that wasn't a thought I had on my mind when I was thinking about that sin. You know, but the spirit will speak to you. It will convict you that you know, hey, listen, the more you give yourself to God, the more committed you become, the more familiar you want to be, then the easier it is for the spirit to move you. It's easier to move a feather than it is to move a brick wall. And so we've got to be mindful and willing, a willing vessel to hear the word of God and to move as he asked us to move, when he asked us to move, not when we get around to it, when he asked us to move. And so with that, we're going to close because next week we're going to talk about some of the mistakes that we make when we testify. It won't be a long session, but I think it'll be informative. I don't want to spend, you know, an hour now trying to cover the entire topic because that gets wordy. (laughs) So until then, let's just say God bless you and yours. And I'll see you again next week, God willing, and the creek don't rise. Pray in the Name of is a Bible-based directory that presents discussions and commentary on the importance of names. God has many names because he's done many things. He's the creator, so he has creatorship names. He is a redemptive God so he has redemptive names. There are names for God in the Old Testament for things that he's done. There are names in the New Testament for things that he's going to do. There are personal names, names that are personal to you and him. There are Hebrew names and there are other names. Man's relationship with God is important, and it's important for you to know which attribute, which characteristic of God you're speaking to when you ask Him for things. And finally, the name of the Lord, the highest name, is discussed. Read, pray in the name of, by Minister Larry Montgomery Sr., available at the Authors Corner online or email montgomerybusiness at hotmail.com. Thanks be to God. You have been listening to another episode of the Walking by Faith podcast hosted by Minister Larry Montgomery, Senior and Friends. Join us again next time as we continue to labor in this vineyard with an eye towards bringing the words of God to those who are interested. Remember, the sole purpose of this podcast is to present candid discussions about various words that are found in the Bible with an eye towards defining in the context of these troubled times along with clarity, insight, commentary and hopefully some revelation to interested listeners. This podcast is a presentation of the Montgomery Media Group. TV and can be found on most podcast platforms. Video presentations are available on YouTube, the African American Shopping Network channel. This show is sponsored by www. The Authors Corner. Online. Please like us and follow us on Facebook. May God continue to bless you and yours until next time. God bless.